This is a quick and dirty demonstration of the data binding tool that I've built for Webflow. It's a simple script which you can include into your Webflow site which will allow you to bind collection data from your Webflow CMS to a component. Specifically we're talking here about a form select component. So this is not a facility that's currently offered by Webflow. Uh, I ran into some problems with this with certain client websites. Here's an example these need to be defined and specified in the CMS and controllable through the CMS when I need the form, specifically the select statement, to update dynamically. Here's another example in a tour booking form where the list of available tours is continually changing. The client is updating the CMS. I needed a way to be able to control automatically binding that to a drop-down list and also to be able to control filtering and sorting of that data. Because this was a recurring problem I've encountered, I decided to make a way to do this more consistently and the Webflow Utility Library was born. Right now it only offers the data binding support. And there are two parts to that. If you have a look at the library, so we can go into the documentation here, some very simple documentation on how to use it. Basically, you're just going to include this into the page you want uh, data binding support in, or you could include it site-wide. And then there are two steps to data binding. One is creating your data source, which is done by creating a collection list and creating a bit of JSON in it, actually. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, it's quite simple and straightforward. And then you're going to create your, uh, your form and your select element and you're going to set one custom attribute to data bind it to that data source. It is a pretty simple and direct process. Let's do a very quick demonstration of this. So first of all, I'm, I'm in a brand new website here, and then at the moment I've only got one page. First thing I'm gonna do is to go in, I'm gonna configure the page, and I'm gonna go all the way down to before body tag, and this is where I'm going to reference uh, my script. So I'm going to jump back here, copy this out. One thing I will notice here, you notice the version number is specified and the reason is that if for some reason I should introduce a breaking change, I will uh, version it, at least increment the minor version number and then that way whatever production websites you have based on 1.0 will not automatically update to 1.1. However, any micro changes I make will in fact be captured and updated automatically for you. So you simply copy and paste this in, good to go. Make sure you're at before body tag and not inside the head tag there. Save that. Now first thing we're gonna do here is create our data source. So I'm gonna just create a section and I'm going to throw in a uh, form block here. And for kicks, I'm going to put another section. Uh, here we go. I uh, don't need this section, but I'm going to just put it here for consistency so you can see what's happening. And I've created my collection list. Now, of course, I need to have some sort of data source. So let's create a data source here. Create a collection. And I am going to, Webflow's being a little bit picky at the moment. There we go. All right, we're just gonna call this test data. And I'm gonna create a name field and I'm going to create, wow. And I'm going to create a um, I only want text values here, so I'll put info, something like that. Notice that you're, you're gonna have your name, you're also automatically gonna have a slug created. So you really don't need much information. You need your unique key that identifies your item, and then you're going to need your um, the, the text that you want to display. So let's just go ahead Maybe having network problems here. It's acting a little bit funny. Okay, let's add 10 items. 
<laughs> there we go. We have some data. All right, we're just going to leave the census. Let's have a quick look at one just to see what's there. We've got our slug, which is always going to be unique for every record. We've got our name, which is what we're going to use for display. We've also got an info field, which we're actually probably not going to use for this data binding exercise. So I've got data now. So I take my collection list. I'm going to bind it to that source. There we go. Test. And what I'm going to do inside my collection item, make sure you've got your collection item specified, is I'm actually going to insert an embed. And there are a couple reasons for this. One is that we're creating JSON data, so we want to be able to control the specification of that. The other reason is that we want to be able to use the slug field. In add field, we can specify slug. However, in the typical data binding view, we do not have slug available. For some reason, the Webflow team decided that that wasn't really ever going to be a common need. So, so we can scroll down here and grab this bit of code paste it in and there's essentially a few things we want to do one is we want to set our data source we'll call it my source just to give it a unique name then we've got our ID this is the unique field this is what's going to be passed to us when someone submits the form I'm going to go ahead and use the slug because it's unique but you could have your own unique key that you generate if you want and then the text that I want to use I'm going to go ahead and use the name that's it. I've now got my data source specified. For this data binding purpose, that's all we have is ID and text. So it's going to create this. Now I'm not going to see it, and that's fine. And if I want, I can take that entire collection and I can simply mark it invisible, like so. So that doesn't appear in my designer. However, I do see it still in the navigator. If I ever want to go in and configure that, I can go back to the HTML embed click here, open code editor, and, con and continue working on it in some way or make modifications. Now I've got my form here. I'm going to go ahead and add a select field. And it doesn't matter what we call it. I'm going to go ahead and allow multiple selections so that it shows it as a list. And the key thing that I need to be able to do here is add a custom attribute to the select. And the custom attribute I'm going to add is data-source. And we called our data source my source. Make sure it matches. That's it. Now, you're not going to be able to see this in operation here. Uh, one thing that I would recommend you do as well is remove the values that you don't want. Currently, I don't clear values. That way you're, you can have a select one if you want. But you can put any values in. It will append the data source values to the end of your list. Now, you can't see this operating here. You also can't see it operating here. And the reason is uh, Webflow doesn't run scripts in its development mode. But I can publish it to my test domain here and we can see if it works. And hopefully it will work fine. It's pretty straightforward. Here we go. So you can see it's grabbed my data source. It has created all of the values. And if I was to view source, I'd see that the IDs are there as well. So when I go to submit it, what's going to come through the form is the IDs that I have specified in my collection.